Hi everyone, this is my first YouTube build video, and I'll be showing you how I make a chalkboard. Now the first step is to prep your surfaces. Now I didn't use primer for, for this, I just sanded down a piece of galvanized sheet metal, and I used 120 grit sandpaper. This actually helps the paint adhere a little bit better. I'm using Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint in black and uh, you gotta make sure to actually stir it up really well. It has a blue tint and as you're stirring you'll see that it starts to get darker and once it's completely uniform you'll be ready to start using the paint. Now I just pour it in this little container here and I'm using a roller to move the paint around. So before you start painting make sure you cover it prevent any problems with the paint later. So I just load my roller and I could start applying paint. Um, using a 36 inch by 24 inch piece of galvanized sheet and I'm going to be applying about three coats of paint and you're supposed to wait about four hours in between every coat so to make sure that it adheres properly. And then once you're done with the first coat, you could start cleaning up your rollers and brushes so you don't go through a ton of them. And uh, here I am cleaning up the tray so I could reuse it. It's plastic, so once the paint is dry, it peels right off, so it's pretty easy to clean. So I'll be attaching this sheet metal to a uh, piece of quarter inch plywood and uh, I'm using an old ca uh, credit card to actually spread the glue around. I'm using a PVA glue. And then once that is fully spread, I could just flip it over and then I put a sheet of MDF on top and some weights to apply pressure. So now it's time to take the cedar decking that I have here. Um, it usually comes in about six to eight feet long and I'm only using about a four foot section of it. And I'm cutting it into one inch strips. So the board itself uh, comes in about one inch by five and a half inches. So this would yield a good amount just by cutting it down into one inch strips. So make sure you're using a feather board or something else if you're using a table saw and a push stick so that your hands are away from the blade as you're cutting. Um, the feather board actually prevents kickback so it's important to use that. Really you should be using all safety precautions when using a table saw. I removed the guard here so you could see what's going on but I would usually have the guard up in cuts like this. And once I was done cutting the strips, I took out the crosscut sled and I began to cut the strips to rough length. I do have to note that as I was doing this, I wasn't really sure what the joinery was going to be. So I did cut two of the pieces a little bit shorter in the end. The next step was to make a channel on the inside so that it would accept the plywood panel and sheet metal and I'm doing this by raising the saw blade about a half inch up and just taking multiple passes moving the fence over taking passes so that it would create a groove on the inside you know to make sure again I'm using a feather board here and a push stick fingers far enough away prevents kickback and anything that could go wrong. So you should also note that my feather board actually starts before the blade starts. This way as you're pushing the wood through the little combs at the end aren't squeezing it against the blade also. It's just pushing the wood against the fence. And then once I'm done with those cuts I can start planing out the corners. I use a hand plane for this 
and I'm just taking back the corners, making them a little bit rounder so they're nicer to the touch and they're not so sharp. You can do this with a router or with some sandpaper, but using a hand plane, I feel, causes a little bit less dust and it's not that noisy. And once you're done hand plating, you could mark out the area for the joint. And what I did here was I just used the wood for sizing and made a tick mark and then took my square and put the layout lines on that piece. And then I took my marking gauge and I set it up at the end of where the groove starts or where the channel starts and I marked the sides as well with that. This way I know exactly where to start my saw and when I clean up that portion I know where my lines are and what my tolerances are there. Now it's time to cut the joints and I'm using a Japanese saw blade here. Um, it cuts on the pull stroke so if you're new to hand tools it makes it a little bit easier because the learning curve is a little bit easier. And then once I'm done cutting I clean it up with the chisel right to the line. This is cedar so it's a very soft wood and that's just really easy to do. And it's a perfect fit. Then I repeat that on both sides. And I had a little scrap wood left over from a different project and I wanted to create a sort of shelf at the bottom and it's the same process. I just mark it out with my gauge and my square so I know where to cut and then I saw away the parts and create the joint. Now I started an angle and I cut down the line and then I cut on the other side down the line and then I cut the middle of that piece. This way it ensures a pretty straight and even cut on both sides. And clean it up with the chisel and it's ready to be put down. And I use a square to make sure that it's even on both sides. So because I'm using cedar, it's important to pre-drill any holes that you're going to be using screws with. Um, the reason for this is because without pre-drilling, the wood tends to split a lot, especially at the end. So sometimes it's a little bit inevitable either way, but pre-drilling really does help prevent that. So I'm using cedar in this build because I decided to make this chalkboard for the outside and cedar happens to hold up well with the outdoors. Uh, it also wanted it to have a certain rustic look so I never actually, I don't plan on finishing the wood after this. I'm just going to leave it as is and let it weather. Uh, it's just the look that I wanted it for the backyard. So pre-drilling a hole at an angle, you have to make sure to start at a 90 degree angle first and then move your drill up in order to get the angle that you want. And then you could go ahead and screw in. Now you'll see here what I meant earlier when I said that I didn't really measure it. This portion was a little bit too short to actually do the same joinery at the bottom. So you could learn from my mistakes. And now I'm marking out the back end because I didn't want too many screws showing in the front. And this is basically to tie in the front portion that is going to hold the chalk and the chalk dust that I cut earlier. So I decided not to attach this to a wall. If you do want to attach it to a wall, you can. i rather just have it leaning up against the wall or up on an easel. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you want more from Do Make Build, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.